Around two years ago, Portsmouth City Council began introducing 24-hour parking zones. Motorists that want to park in these bays have to pay, whether they're there at three in the afternoon or three in the morning. The council says it's to make sure that people that use the city's night economy are making a fair contribution. Well, in the city centre area where we introduce 24-hour parking charges, there are two main issues. Um, one issue is I think it's reasonable that people that are using parking provision make a contribution towards it. I don't think it would be fair that only people during the day make that contribution. And the other, perhaps more important aspect of it is the city centre of Portsmouth has a huge number of resident students and the Portsmouth City Council and the University of Portsmouth are absolutely committed to trying to do what we can to dissuade students from being in vehicles into Portsmouth. Portsmouth has fantastic uh, transport links between the centre of the city and where the, the students predominantly live and where their campuses are to do their studies and so there, it shouldn't be really essential for any student to bring a vehicle into the city. If we didn't have the charges within the centre of the city I think there's a danger that we're actually saying to students well bring your car in it's free all night to park. But residents have told us that these 24-hour parking zones are not always situated in logical places. Now we've come to an area of Portsmouth just by the camber. To my right is the rear of the Ben Ainsley Racing headquarters and behind me in the distance is Gunwharf Quays. It's not an altogether pumping area and yet this area of parking just here is in operation 24 hours a day. Parking there for two hours will set you back £2.60 and you can stay all day for £12. Meanwhile, on the other side of this rather narrow stretch of pavement, you can park for absolutely nothing for those same two hours, but you can't stay longer than that because it is a residence parking zone. But can these zones be properly enforced? When I asked what times traffic wardens worked, the council told me generally 7am to 10pm, sometimes to 2am. This would leave a gap of five to nine hours overnight with nobody to monitor the zones. But the man in charge of parking insists lawbreakers won't get off scot-free. Now, it's not true that all my staff go home at 10 o'clock. Very often they are working till two or three o'clock in the morning. Not every night, and I'm not going to tell anybody when they will, and when they will in the future. But believe me, if you park on a double yellow line at night, park in a pay and display, at night without paying or do anything outside the restrictions, there's a chance you'll be caught. But of course, the city's 34 traffic wardens have a lot more on their plate than monitoring the 10 24-hour car parks across the city and the plethora of on-street locations where 24-hour parking restrictions have sprung up. The priority for enforcement staff isn't necessarily pay and display. It's important we do that. Most people, if they go into a pay and display car park and think that a parking attendant isn't going to come around, aren't going to pay. So from a revenue protection point of view, it's absolutely critical we do that. But that's not the priority of civil enforcement officers. Their priority is road safety. We spend a lot of time outside schools making zigzags clear to keep children safe. We spend a lot of time looking at corners to make sure that people can see around the corner before they pull into moving traffic to make sure, particularly in the residential areas, that a fire engine can get round the corner late at night and that people aren't parking on corners and therefore threatening the lives of their neighbours further up the road. We've got to make sure that the strategic routes in Portsmouth are kept clear from poorly parked traffic. So there's a myriad of things the enforcement officers do. Pay and display enforcement is just one of those aspects. Portsmouth Council chiefs say parking zones and prices are under constant review but they told me there aren't any plans for major changes in the pipeline. Charlotte Breer-Edney, that's Solent.